In this first lecture on Ruby and Rails, I want to just introduce both Ruby and Rails and say a little bit about why collectively they're interesting and have generated a lot of enthusiasm amongst web application developers. Um, I'll, I'll start off by talking a little bit about how one or two key players saw Ruby and Rails as the next step beyond Java. Then I'll, I'll progress to talking a little bit more firstly about Ruby as a language, just some a few pointers to its distinguishing features and then introduce Rails. Now let's first take a look at what you expect to get out of the course as a whole. Uh, so a quick summary, uh, a rather grand ambition of wanting to bring you to a high level of proficiency in developing this is what Rails is good at, interactive web applications using the Ruby on Rails framework. So succinct, but it is quite ambitious because uh, although Rails is a highly productive environment, uh, beginning to, the, uh, moving to that state of high proficiency, you really do need to have quite a detailed understanding of it. And so that's what we hope to give you in this course. In addition, as you're doing that, what we hope uh, also to provide is some understanding of the benefits of using an Agile development approach. Agile development and Rails really go hand in hand. This is one of the real benefits of Rails. There's a lot of support there for working interactively with your customer. And this is a second aspect of, of it. Um, the, the move away from waterfall type development methods for these kinds of applications, in fact for many kinds of applications, is, has been significantly consolidated by frameworks like Rails. Um, there's an additional aspect of it which we'll begin to move into. We're not going to talk too much about web services in, in the course, but Rails does support the deployment of, of web services. It's in in a sense native to the Rails framework, uses a particular um, approach to publishing web services, which is uh, the using uh, RESTful web services as opposed to the, the uh, SOAP and WSDL route, which has perhaps a slightly more widespread currency, but is a much more complex way of, of dealing with web services. Um, web service is not the main focus of the course, but it is important to talk about this. The big benefit is that because it's native, support for RESTful web service is native to, to, to Rails, you don't have to do much more in order to publish your application as a web service. So we'll show you how to do that in the course. So what we're going to do today, as I said, the main objective is to say, why is Ruby on Rails interesting? Um, what I'm going to do in the course is to use NetBeans as an IDE for developing Rails applications. It's convenient and it's got some reasonable, reasonably good support. Many Rails developers migrate quickly from an IDE to working at the command line. So we'll, as the course progresses, talk to you a little bit about how, how, to, how to do that. Sometimes if you're working quickly, then the IDE actually gets in your way. So uh, we're not necessarily recommending that you stay with NetBeans, but it's a good way of learning Rails and it can get you up and started quite quickly. And then the other two parts of it. First of all, I'll start talking about Ruby as a programming language. Um, but in the next lecture, you'll see a lot more in the way of, of programming exercises. And then I'll very quickly introduce Rails. Um, but we won't be going into that in to, uh, a huge amount of detail for another two lectures, because I want to get some basic Rails uh, Ruby programming in place first. What was it that actually pushed me, moved me uh, into 
into looking at Rails um, within the university then I've been teaching Java for a few years and uh, in many research projects we've been extensive users of Java for interactive web applications as well as other other kinds of applications and then a friend of mine pointed to pointed me towards this book, Beyond Java, by Bruce Tate, and he went through a range of different um, uh, languages and frameworks, uh, talking about what, what was on the horizon at the time. This was published in 2005. Uh, what was on the horizon at the time which would actually take developers away from Java? Uh, so he started off by talking about how uh, what it was about Java that moved people, encouraged people to move away from um, C and C++, uh, a relatively straightforward transition, but some features which Java had which encouraged people to, to move away from that. Um, likewise, he then continued to look at some of the other things which were at that time up and coming. And he came down very heavily in favor of Ruby on Rails as a framework which would very quickly start to take people away from using Java for certainly for interactive web applications. Um, and he was not the only person, many others uh, who were sometimes quite to highly committed Java programmers. Uh, for some reason or other had some experience with Rails and it really changed their way of working. They suddenly realized that they were doing an awful lot of work in building applications in Java and they could do things much more quickly and recover a high degree of enthusiasm for programming through working with, with Rails. It took away the need to deal with a lot of the routine things, the boring things about programming, and enabled them to focus on the creative aspect, the business logic, pure and simple, and a lot of the back-end stuff in terms of interacting with the database, um, the generation of views and so forth, was all handled for you by, by Rails. So you can focus on added value and not having to configure a lot of routine stuff. Um, and there are a number of uh, a number of themes underlying the whole community uh, of rails from the originators right through to many of the the uh, um, Quite some, quite some of the quite high-profile proponents of Rails, but the community as a whole supports some strong opinions about what are the right ways of going about developing software. So there are a number of mantras that Rails developers have in the back of their minds all the time. On this slide, I've put down four of them, perhaps the four four main ones. Um, the first one in this this interesting, uh, um, perhaps slightly counterintuitive statement that by following conventions you actually free yourself up. Uh, so you gain freedom by being conventional. And we'll say more and more about this as we go through. This paradigm of convention over configuration and is an important one of Rails. By following some simple conventions and not intrusive conventions, then Rails as a framework knows what you intend to do so it can do an awful lot of the work for you. Um, we'll see that in the, the object relational mapping that, that Rails uses and by following some straightforward conventions in the naming of the classes in your models, then Rails can generate the database tables on your behalf. You don't even need to think about the back-end database. The, skip to the third one of those bullet points, perhaps next. 
the do not repeat yourself. Again, this shouldn't really be an exclusive um, uh, mantra of Rails developers. Any good software engineer should be following that. The key thing about Rails is that it offers a number of uh, tools to support the refactorization of chunks of not just the procedural code into reusable functions, but also chunks of views, chunks of HTML into reusable pieces. Um, we'll see the use of a, um, a template in a project so that all of the repeated uh, layout <coughs> is factored out into one file and then the pages, the static pages, are just imported into or rendered within that view template. A um, whole range of different things which are supported in Rails to help you refactor continually your code so that anything which is used repeatedly in your code <coughs> can be factored out into a single location and a known location following some straightforward conventions so no <coughs> Rails knows exactly where to look in order to find what it needs to complete a, um, uh, a uh, part of your, your application at runtime. The continued drive for elegant solutions again is a, a, a core part of the mindset of the Rails community. And again, there are the benefits of that in terms of increased productivity and maintainability that arise from that uh, uh, will become apparent as we go through. And all of those are driving to this uh, key underlying reason why Rails has been so successful is that projects succeed if the developers are highly motivated and highly productive. They can see quick results. They're not spending a lot of time trying to sort out quite routine and, and mundane parts of, of the code base. So let's start with Ruby itself. Um, what are the key features of Ruby? Ruby as a language, as we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about, has been around for quite a long time now. Um, it gained quite quickly a following, but a rather a niche following. Um, as we'll see, it's got an easy syntax. It's sim. It's quite familiar. It'll be quite familiar if you are a, a Java programmer uh, in many respects. But it's somewhat simplified compared with Java. So some some things which are little bits of syntax which are repeatedly uh, need to be included in a, a Java program are removed. So you'll see a, a notable absence of semicolons and curly brackets in, in, in Ruby. Um, it's fully object oriented. We'll say a, a lot more about that in, next, the, in the next lecture. But everything in Ruby is an object. There are no primitive types, no need to wrap uh, primitive types up as objects. Everything, an integer, a string, um, for example, is an object right from its point of 